So this webinar is being recorded. So um, we will have this recording available for you um, probably tomorrow, the day after, and it will be available at events.bbbcommunity.org. Uh, my name is Faustine Chan. I am the business innovation manager for BBB. So I've been helping coordinate these daily webinars to bring all of our businesses and also the business community useful information um, just to help their business during at this time. Um, I know many of you have questions regarding a lot of topics um, during this uncertain time, just making sure you get information to help your business as well. So we have a great speaker today um, from the FTC, um, Marcella Segura. She is a regional director in the Western Region Los Angeles office. Since joining the commission in 2008, um, she's had the pleasure of investigating litigating matters that cut across the landscape of the BCP divisions. Her cases have included telemarketing scams, deceptive advertising, abusive debt collection, and Truth and Lending Act violations. She's also engaged in numerous outreach endeavors, including those focused on financial service issues to Spanish-speaking communities. So please welcome Maricela. Good morning, everyone, um, and thank you, Faustine. And I'd like to thank the Better Business Bureau for all that you're doing for your membership, for small businesses, and getting the word out there um, about what to trust, what not to trust, and helping your members during this really difficult time. Um, uh, today we're going to talk about the many and various kinds of scams related to coronavirus that we're seeing as well as um, sharing some resources with you and what the FTC is doing about um, these scams. Um, next slide please. And this is my contact email um, which will be repeated at the end. So if you have other questions or want to ask about any of the resources that I shared today, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, next slide. Yeah, so as we know um, from all health emergencies, natural disasters, um, that scammers follow the headlines, as do we. And so as headlines change, so will scams. And so what we're seeing is that scammers are taking advantage of the fear around coronavirus and small businesses aren't exempt from this. Scammers also target small businesses and particularly your employees, which is why it's important to talk about these scams and let your employees know to be on the alert. Um, and it's also important for you to share what you're seeing with us because what we do is we use and share your reports to us about scammers, uh, about deceptive websites or deceptive information. We share that, not, not only do we use that for our own law enforcement and, and how we find the bad guys, but, the, but we share it with other law enforcement throughout the country. Um, next slide, please. Um, so let's get into some of the scams we're seeing. First, and extremely important, um, and what I'm gonna talk about are a lot of these scams that have been out there for a while, but they're just kind of remarketed or retooled to, to um, hit the coronavirus. So really important are those fake emails and text messages and malicious websites. Uh, fraudsters are sending messages that claim to be from legitimate sources like the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, um, the World Health Organization, or other public health offices. They may ask for social security numbers, they may ask you for your tax ID or other sensitive information about your employees or your business or your customers. What they're aiming to get is your money or your information. They also might be wanting you to click on a website or download a document that downloads malware, um, not just to your computer, but if you are connected, it can infiltrate your business network. Um, so here is the tip to give to your employees. Do not click on links from sources you do not know and remind your staff not to do this at work. Um, it's also important to make sure that your anti-malware, antivirus software on your computer is up to date. Um, and, I, and I just wanna reiterate, this is gonna be repeated throughout. Um, the World Health Organization, these, these, um, these public health offices aren't going to be asking you for your tax ID, your personal information or other sensitive information. Um, and, and they probably won't be reaching out to you directly with emails and requests. Um, next slide. And so we're going to see there's 
definitely one headline that scammers are following, which is that there is uh, aid available under the Coronavirus Aid Relief Economic Act or CARES Act. And it provides financial help for individuals. And that's, um, that's the economic impact program, payment program. Um, so this is, this is, scammers are following the headlines that there's government help for individuals. And we're also gonna talk in a minute about government help for businesses. But staying on this point, um, criminals will use this type of headline to make their phony pitch sound more credible. So they will grab the names of these programs from the news um, they will take some tidbits about how it's going to work and sort of twist it to sound more convincing. So here's what you need to know and what you should share with your employees. If someone calls or emails you out of the blue claiming that there's money available from a government agency, but that you have to provide an upfront payment or provide some personal financial information, hang up the phone. The government will not ask you to pay to get help nor will they ask for sensitive information to get the help. Also, any help from the government pursuant to this program will have a specific process that everyone will have to follow. So if someone calls and tells you that they can get your money to you right away, um, that they can help you jump the line, um, then, you know, hang up. The best source of the information for uh, loans available will be, and particularly for small businesses, will be the Small Business Association. Um, and and I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but I want to underscore a lot of ways that these scammers work, and we've seen this in action in other, in other relief contexts, they will claim that they have the in, that they can get your money faster. Hang up the phone, they cannot. And, and the government will not typically call your cell phone or call you via robocall and ask for your personal information. Um, so please pass that on to your employees because there's a lot of misinformation that might be floating around um, that is perpetrated by the fraudsters. Next slide, please. Now, government help for business. The best source um, for accurate information, as I mentioned, is the Small Business Association. And you can find out information about the relief available for small businesses on, on their sba.gov backslash coronavirus. As I mentioned, the CARES Act also includes financial help for businesses, including nonprofit organizations and churches with less than 500 employees. As business owners, that's probably a headline that you've noticed and scammers have too. And as expected, they're distorting the truth uh, in an effort to cheat small businesses. The um, financial help that is coming to small businesses is through the Small Business Administration. And the best source for accurate information, as I said, is their website. Um, on their website, they will have information about who is eligible and how to apply for the various types of help available. Um, go to that website, sba.gov backslash coronavirus, bookmark it, follow the instructions on the page, so that you can avoid any other noise out there from scammers who are trying to get your financial information. Um, these are some things to watch out for. Scammers will um, send you emails that look like they're from the SBA. They may call and say that they are from the SBA or impersonate some other government or financial institution. And they're gonna say that they can get your money faster. Don't believe them. Hang up the phone and go straight to the SBA's website. Um, the SBA's Coronavirus Small Business Guidance and Loan Resource page offers the latest information. It'll be updated about the Paycheck Protection Program, the economic injury disaster loans that are available, loan advances, SBA debt relief, and SBA express bridge loans. Um, you know, the scams that are perpetrating around this SBA help for small businesses aren't new. But we see all the time that there are these application scams where scammers will say, you just have to fill out this form and we'll get your SBA loan for you. They might even say they're working with the SBA. Don't trust anybody who says they're working with the SBA. Typically, the SBA is not going to be reaching out directly to small businesses to ask them to fill out a form. You will go to the SBA and fill out the form that you see on the website. It's just the safer way to go to make sure that you're not dealing with a fraudster.
And, you know, I, I want to say it, it's true that there are legitimate groups, financial institutions sharing information as well. Um, but given, as I said, the number of fraudsters out there that are wanting to make a quick buck, it's hard to figure out who is real, who's legit versus who is not. So you, even if you feel like you're dealing with the SBA directly, just go to the website. It is safer. It's the better way to go right now when situations are so fluid and there's so many people out there. Um, if you're going to give up your financial information, you want to go to the SBA's website directly and make sure you're dealing with the right agency. Next slide. Business email scams. Um, you know, we've warned companies, this fraud's not new either. These are frauds that are perpetrated by a business email or what looks to be business email. This is, for example, when an employee gets a message that appears to come from a company higher up and it directs that person, often someone from the accounting department, to wire money, transfer funds, send gift card codes, or provide passwords or bank account information. And in reality, it isn't someone from the higher up, it's a con artist who has spoofed the boss's email address or phone number. And we often talk, refer to this as the CEO scam. So we have seen emails where it looks like the CEO is directing someone from the accounting department to send a wire, an emergency wire to a particular account. Um, in these times of crisis and uncertainty, an employee uh, may get an emergency request and not think much of it because right now everything feels a bit like an emergency. And scammers know this, so they're gonna try to take advantage of this time. And they know that many people are teleworking, they're working from home, and they know that people, that. Uh, employees can't just walk down the hall to ask uh, whether or not this email is for real or legit. So here's what you need to do. You need to warn your staff about these scams. Tell them that there is such a thing as a CEO scam. Just because the email looks like it's coming from the president of the company, it may not be coming from the president of the company. So they should double check any questionable directive, especially if it's a request to send money, give up some very personal information. Give your employees, after you tell them that there is such a thing as this type of scam, give them a central in-house point of contact where they can verify the requests they receive so that they can feel safe when they double check the information. And ask everyone who's working remotely for you from their computers to make sure that their computer security is up to date. Um, next slide. Now, IT scams. Um, so this is very much like, and we've seen this before as well, this is like the business email scam, but this time the call or message claims to come from a member of your technology staff who will be calling other employees and directing them uh, to maybe download software or requesting a password. And these scams pose a particular problem now because um, they engage in what cybercrime experts call social engineering, which is a dark art of manipulating human behavior to facilitate fraud. So what do they do? They do their homework. They uh, figure out what people are doing for work, especially right now that they're working remotely. They're understanding a lot of people are using video chat like we're using today, video chat platforms to do their work. So they're really good at what they do. They may get information about your business online. They might find your org chart and figure out who's who in the company and say things like, oh, I spoke with Fred who said you were having a computer problem or you know, the meeting has been shifted to our new teleconferencing platform. Here's the link, download the file or download the software. Um, what you don't want your employees to do is to download anything or click links. So your best defense is to train your employees to make sure that they know that this type of thing can be a scam as well and where they can go for accurate information. So you wanna make sure that you have a good in-house source that you've communicated to others. If you have any questions about technology, go to this person um, so that they're not responding to random messages that come to them that might look legit but aren't. Um, and then remind them, remind them, never give out passwords without double checking, always stop and verify. If it's something sensitive that they're being asked to hand over, they should stop and verify and go back to that one source of information that you provided them to stop and verify. 
tell them not to be quick to click on links to stop and verify before they do so. Um, next scan. So supply scams and fake invoices. We also are seeing um, that websites are mimicking the look of well-known online retailers. And right now when supplies are, are scarce, it's even more so. They claim to have the essentials that you need, but in reality, they're complete fakes. They take your order, grab your credit card information, but don't deliver what you've ordered. So how do you stay away from these fake sites? Well, the safer strategy is to go and type in the websites for the companies that you recognize. Now, and be careful when you're typing in the website. I, I'm sure some of you are familiar with these fake websites that are just sort of one digit off from the legit website and they might look legit. Um, you know, they register these websites and, you know, and then the next day they're gone. Um, before taking a chance on an unfamiliar supplier, you might want to check with your trusted industry colleagues to see whether or not they're the real deal. Um, and often just sticking with the companies that you know and have done business with is the safer course. Um, we've also seen in the past where scammers send fake invoices. Usually these fake invoices have been mailed, but since most people are online right now, um, the, you, they could be seeing face, fake invoices for supplies sent over email. And they're just hoping that the person who receives it, um, who might pay your bills, say um, your accountant or your bookkeeper, they're hoping that that person will get the invoice and assume it's for things that the company actually ordered. Um, and things are topsy-turvy right now. They may not know that you didn't order the paper or the cleaning supplies, um, so they may just pay it. Um, make sure that all your employees who are working remotely um, are communicating with you, know, you, with the central point of contact, and following the regular procedures uh, before paying anything. And if they're unsure about a particular invoice, tell them to stop and verify. Again, that is why having that central point of contact for whatever it is that you want, uh, and you can have different points of contact for different things, but you wanna make sure your employees know who they can talk to, who they can verify requests with. Next slide. Um, that's the, the fake invoice coming up. Illegal robocalls, as we know, that is always gonna be happening. It's happening now. Um, I had to unplug my phone to make sure I don't get one in the middle of this webinar. Um, now that more people are working from home, you know, they might be picking up calls they wouldn't usually answer when they're at work. Um, that means we're probably all getting a lot more robocalls. And they've been, scammers have been quick to get on the coronavirus business and they're offering fake cures and they're offering bogus test kits, um, sanitation supplies. I mean, the list goes on and on about what they're, how they're retooling the robocalls to fit the coronavirus situation. But they're also calling small businesses, we find. And they're talk, they're, and, and when I mean robocalls, we're talking about those automated, automated sales calls. And these sales calls are illegal. So just to get back to basics, a robocall is one of those pre-recorded calls where someone's trying to sell you something. Um, those calls are illegal unless you have opted in to receive the call and opted in in writing. So for the most part, um, BBB members have not opted in in writing to receive these sales calls from the company that's calling them. So you know from the jump that the call is illegal. So whatever follows from that call is probably a scam or it's illegal. Um, there is an example of what I'm talking about. Um, uh, Fausti, if you could click the, um, my, go back and click the microphone, um, the bubble there, yeah. Did you, could you hear it? Well, um, it didn't, I, I couldn't hear it. It didn't play, but this, this was the robocall says, your small business who may be affected by the coronavirus, and it continues, ensure your Google listing is correctly displaying, otherwise customers may not find you online during this time. And so this whole, this coronavirus pre-recorded call is about getting your Google listing up because um, during this time you might not be displayed. 
So we've seen this scam like this before, and um, the call isn't from Google. Um, if you press any number, Alpha will say, press one to, you know, do this, press two to do that. If you press any number, your, your phone number is just going to get put into a lead generator list and it will be sold and you're going to be continuing to receive these calls. What, uh, sometimes the pre-recorded call will say, press one if you no longer want to receive calls like this. And so you might think pressing one is going to fix it but it won't because it, all it does is it verifies that this is a live number, it's an actual, someone will actually pick up and then your number will get put on a list and you'll be guaranteed to receive more calls. Now, re remember, these robocalls, unless you've opted in to receive them, they're illegal. So engaging with the call in any way is just gonna cause you more trouble. So remind your staff that the only right response to an illegal robocall that's trying to sell them something is to hang up. Um, you can block that number. There is call blocking technology. If you go to ftc.gov um, and search robocalls, there is information about how to um, block certain calls. Um, we would also ask that if you receive a robocall, um, you report the call to the federal to us, the Federal Trade Commission. If you if you know see the number that's coming up on your caller ID, report the number. We publish lists of these numbers on a daily basis, and then um, telecommunications companies can use that to block those numbers on a daily basis. Um, next slide, please. Hey, Marisol, I think my volume was um, off, so oh, I can play okay. a little bit. Oh, that sure, was yeah. my fault, so hang on one second. No problem. Please do not hang up. If you are a small business that has been affected by the coronavirus, press one to ensure your Google listing is correctly displaying. Otherwise, customers may not find you online during this time. Press 1 to ensure your Google listing is displaying properly during this coronavirus outbreak. Press 2 to be removed from our list. Yeah, so that's an example of where the press 1 and press 2, neither one of those is going to do what they say it's going to do. Both are just intended to get you to um, verify that it's a good number. Um, and then they might, you know, if you press one, you actually may get somebody who's trying to take your money on top of verifying that your number is a good one. Um, now, data scams. Um, data scams, we're talking about data protection. For hackers working remotely, well, hackers work remotely all the time, but for many of us and many of your employees, working from home is a new experience with more people that are telecommuting. Hackers are hoping that companies will let down their online defenses and make it easier to infiltrate the network. So here are some ways you, here are some things you can do to maintain security while working from home. Um, start with the cybersecurity basics. Keep your uh, security software up to date. Use um, passwords on all your de devices and apps. Make sure your passwords are strong, they're long, they're unique. Um, secure your home network. You start with that router that you have. If you have a Wi-Fi router, turn on the encryption, which would be WPA2 or WPA3. Encryption will scramble the information you send over your network so outsiders can't read it. If your router doesn't have WPA2 or WPA3 encryption, try updating your router software. If not, um, consider replacing it. But many routers now, you know, they will have the WPA2 or WPA3. Um, you want to password protect, uh, obviously, your router so that not anybody can just hop on your Wi-Fi network if they're close to your home. Uh, keep an eye on your laptop and remind your employees to do this as well. If you're using a laptop, make sure it's password protected so that it locks after some time being idle. Um, you know, if you're working from the from home, you might not be worried about that so much but some folks are not working from home they might go somewhere else to work and so you want to remind them to keep their um, passwords protect their laptops password protected and not to leave it unattended um, securely store sensitive files so um, you know as many employees who are working from home have probably taken some confidential paper files files with um, important confidential information on them you want to remind them to keep those um, documents secure, keep them out of sight, under lock and key when they're not at use. It's good to have a, a locking file cabinet. You probably have those at work. You should have them at home. Um, dispose of sensitive data securely. 
remind employees that once they finish using whatever document they, they are using with the sensitive data, don't just throw it in the trash or the recycling bin, shred it. The paperwork you no longer uh, need can be a treasure trove. So uh, identity thieves still do dumpster diving because they're still finding sensitive information in the dumpster. So you wanna make sure that your employees know to um, securely shred uh, the information that includes personal information about your customers or their own personal information. And there are plenty of resources to help you and your employees make a safer transition to remotely working. Um, a good place to start, and I'll share this with Faustine and the BBB that they can put it up, um, is the National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST. And it, and it sounds very um, technologically complex, but what they have is a, an updated telework cybersecurity page uh, on their website, which I'll, I'll provide to the BBB, but it's just a really uh, easy sort of one sheet reminder of cybersecurity basics at home. Um, and so there is also on our website, we have a small business page. We have cybersecurity information for small businesses as well, listing these and other resources. Um, next slide, please. And, you know, I think before, before the presentation, we were talking about this a little bit. There's just so much information flying around. So we'll just call this misinformation and rumors. Some of the information out there is good. Some of it's not. And it can be really hard to tell the difference, especially when the situation is so fluid. There's so many things happening every day. Um, I, I've received... I have to admit, I've received some emails from family members telling me that, you know, this thing is going to happen, that thing's going to happen, you know, some stuff looking like it's coming from the National Guard when it's not. Um, you know, it's just really hard to trust what's real and what isn't. So to try to sort it out, you know, just keep, think critically about the messages you're seeing and ask yourself these three questions before you act or pass on any message. So think about who is the message from? Do you know the person? Do you trust them? Do you trust the business or the entity? Are you sure that it's coming from that place? Considering all the fake emails and phone numbers that we've just talked about, you know, you really have to be skeptical that you know the source of the information. And then think about what do they want me to do? Do they want me to buy something? Do they want me to take some action, like give up some piece of personal information? Do they want me to download a file? If they are asking you to do something as opposed to imparting some information that might be useful to you, then you need to think twice. They want something from you. And then finally, what is the evidence behind the message? Do some fact checking yourself from good sources. Even if you trust the messenger, um, does the evidence support what they're saying? As I said, some of my family members are great intentions, but they're sending me these texts that aren't real. And I have to say, you, you know, look it up. It's not real. It's a scam. Um, and so I would just urge you to let these three questions guide, um, at, guide you as you're looking through messages online or, you know, a family member flips you a piece of information and let them steer your next course of action. So to get um, government sources about COVID-19, you can start at usa.gov.gov backslash coronavirus. And there, there's an aggregation of links to federal, state, and local government agency and sources on uh, up-to-date information regarding the coronavirus, government efforts to deal with it. Um, I think there's a link to the Small Business Association. So try to go to um, the trusted sources. Next, uh, next slide. Uh, in terms of law enforcement, an important part of the Federal Trade Commission's work is targeting companies that make claims without scientific proof to back it up. And we're seeing a heck of a lot of this right now. Um, you know, there are makers of tea, essential oil, colloidal, colloidal silver that are, these companies are making claims that it is, um, will make you immune to coronavirus or will help cure it. Um, but these products will not prevent coronavirus. And there's no evidence to back up these claims. So during this pandemic, the FTC's attorneys and investigators are working closely and have worked closely with the Food and Drug Administration to find the companies that are breaking the law and stop them. 
Um, our two agencies recently sent warning letters to seven companies, giving them 48 hours to say how they're going to address the concerns. Basically, they're making claims about how their product was going to help prevent coronavirus, and we asked them for what we call their substantiation or their, their backup, their proof. Um, both the FTC and the FT FDA want to uh, make sure that the claims are removed. And so we watch the social media, we watch online marketplaces and complaints that are submitted to us to make sure that these companies have stopped posting these claims. So your reports really do matter because if you spot what looks like a suspicious claim about a so-called coronavirus treatment, please let us know and submit your complaint to ftc.gov backslash complaint. Um, and so here, are the list of the companies that we sent warning letters to because they made a claim about some product right now with respect to coronavirus. Um, next slide, please. And so to talk a little bit more about our enforcement, we are also tackling those illegal robocalls like the one you just heard. Um, FTC staff sent letters to companies that help scammy telemarketers um, and warning them about penalties for helping them make these calls. So as many of you know, small businesses, there is an infrastructure around telecommunications. So, you know, we have uh, voice over internet protocol VoIP providers. We have um, companies that will uh, provide the 800 numbers. We have um, companies that will help carry your telephone call. So this, this infrastructure around the phone call um, even though they may not be the scammers themselves, they may be assisting and facilitating the scammers in making those robocalls. So uh, what we've done, we've focused on uh, voice over internet protocol services most recently. Uh, these are the companies that transmit uh, illegal robocalls or carry them for telemarketers or that give the phone numbers that scammers can use for people to call them back. So we issued warning letters to some VoIP providers that reminding them that under the FTC Act and the telemarketing sales rule, assisting and facilitating others in making illegal robocalls uh, or assisting and facilitating others who are involved in making illegal robocalls is illegal itself. Um, and as I mentioned, pre-recorded sales message are, are all illegal unless you have opted in and you've given your express written permission to receive the robocalls from that person or the company. Uh, and most of us have not, so for the most part, all of those robocalls we're getting are illegal. Um, the companies that received these warning letters um, are various. They're, one of them is VoIP Max. Another one is SIP Join Holding, iFly Communications, Third Rock Telecom, Blue Tone Telecommunications, VoIP Terminator, aka BLM Marketing, J2 Web Services, Boxbone, uh, and Comet Media. So those companies receive warning letters to let them know that even assisting and facilitating companies making illegal robocalls can be itself illegal under certain circumstances. Um, and then finally, next slide. So I urge you all just to stay informed. Um, if you want to receive our business alerts, we um, do blogs. We have blog posts and business alerts which are you know, digestible nuggets and they usually uh, give up to date, they will give up to date information on emerging scams. You can subscribe to these um, and get them via email or um, on your phone. And you can go to ftc.gov backslash subscribe. We again urge you to report scams or questionable claims to us, ftc.gov backslash complaint. Um, you know, this is important, not just to the FTC, but to all law enforcers who have access to our system and to people in your community that you take the time to report a scam. So whenever you see a suspicious spot, a suspicious claim or anything you might think might be a scam, let us know and submit your complaint at ftc.gov backslash complaint. And, um, you know, here are some key sources for you to share about the latest on the pandemic. Go to coronavirus.gov, which takes you straight to resources, including the Center for Disease Control, um, to learn more about scams and how to avoid them. We have a coronavirus dedicated page, ftc.gov backslash coronavirus. And then to learn about 
what's going on across the federal government um, and along with other resources from other agencies, the um, federal government has set up usa.gov backslash coronavirus so that you could get all those resources in one place. Um, next slide. And so you can help us um, spread the word uh, about the coronavirus scams so that not only you, your employees are on alert, but others in your community. So the FTC has dedicated um, a web page, as I mentioned, the coronavirus, uh, ftc.gov backslash coronavirus that has timely information about scams. Um, and it's a great resource to share with others. And you can use the social media graphics you'll find at the bottom of that page to help us promote sort of these resources through your communication channels. I mean, we're basically all in this together. Um, and so the more trusted information we can share with everyone, we know the safer we will all be, the safer your businesses will be, but the safer your families will be as well. Um, so if you can just get to the next slide. And as I mentioned, this is my contact information. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me directly. Um, and you know, I'm happy to share whatever resources we have. And that is my email. My name is Maricela Segura, and that is a phone number where I can be reached. Um, so thank you very much for your time. Thank you, uh, Faustine, and to the BBB for hosting me this morning. And um, I just would like would take any questions if anyone has any questions. Yeah. So if anybody has any questions, um, you can type them in the chat option or the Q and A and we can answer those. Um, there was a question that just came up on um, the scams due to COVID-19. Has the FTC seen a rise in those types of scams um, as we progress throughout the months with this virus? So what, what, I'm, what I'll say is we've definitely seen a rise in the complaints about COVID-19 scams. Yes, there, it, it's been going up um, on a regular basis and pretty dramatically. So we have, and we're tracking those now. And actually, if you go to our complaint assistance assistant, um, there will be a section to, to check the box that it's a coronavirus related scam. And then we have a question from um, Marilyn. Um, Due to the recent article that just was sent out about someone's Zoom account being hacked in with their meeting, um, what do they? What do business owners do when they do get hacked? Do they just contact the law enforcement or the FTC? What are the proper procedures they need to follow? So you would um, you should submit a complaint to the FTC, and uh, you might contact law enforcement. It, I mean, it really depends on what they have taken uh, from you, but you want to report it. The FTC, and you can also report it to law enforcement, especially if you feel like um, pers sensitive personal information was taken uh, from you. If it was just, um, you know, if it was a Zoom meeting where they, I, I, I've seen some articles where they'll just um, hack into a Zoom meeting and disrupt the meeting. That may be low sensitivity, but I think what it is, it reminds us that that article, I, I think I've read the same article where, um, um, hackers were just disrupting meetings with um, messages or some other disruptive material. It just sort of reminds us that some of these um, websites aren't um, totally locked down and secure. So you want to be very careful what you share on that kind of platform. You probably don't want to share sensitive personal information. Um, you know, everything that I, we shared today on Zoom with these slides. I was willing to share to the public and actually if the scammers do see it, I hope they do see it because they'll know that we're looking out there and we're informing people that there are reputable sources. But I, I do think that you should be careful what you share on some kind of a, a platform like that. Be, just, just think about the possibility that someone could hack into it. Um, if anyone else has any questions, please go ahead and type them in the chat option or the Q&A and we can um, answer those. Um, once again, this webinar was recorded, so if you did miss any of the information, um, it will be posted on events.bbcommunity.org. Um, if you're a call-in listener only, so if you called in with a number, um, just go to that website and those slides and other webinars will also be um, posted as well. 
So we'll just um, let me look and see if there's any more questions. My, thank you. I don't think I see any more questions. So thank you so much, Maricela, um, for thank sharing you. all this information. Um, I know BBB works very closely with you and um, the FTC. I appreciate our relationship. Um, if anyone else has any more questions or follow up questions, you can definitely reach out to her. Um, very knowledgeable lady. And thank you so much for doing what you do in the community. Thank you, Felstein. Thank you. And thank you to the BBB for um, just being available to its members and to the public at large. I very much appreciate it. Thank you so much. And please be safe out there, all the businesses that are listening. Yes, thank you. Be safe, everyone. Bye. Bye.